In part one of this video, I showed you my design and veneering process. For the outside of this case, I want something special. I bought a layered Mandela pattern online. I chose this pattern because of its rectangular shape. It has eight layers. The first layer is a full sheet of gloss black vinyl I already applied to the back of the boards. I went round and round to try and find the perfect material to make the layers. I tried vinyl on 8th inch plywood and stack cut it on the scroll saw. This was an entire Sunday to drill and cut the first layer. The 8th inch plywood was not good quality and some of the layers separated around the finer cuts. I learned three lessons today. Number one, don't use cheap thin plywood for intricate cuts. Number two, on thicker scroll saw projects, I could use any color vinyl over the wood before I cut it to give me many different finishes I could never get by painting. And number three, it takes a very long time to hand cut an eight layer of Mandela. I decided to use a hundred pound cardstock. Now this was pretty cheap for 50 sheets. Begin with the Cricut software. The setting for a 100 pound cardstock did not cut all the way through. I used the setting for poster board and that worked out great. Some of the patterns take up to 20 minutes to cut. I'm very satisfied with the cut. It's a lot quicker and more accurate than I could ever do by hand. Now rather than buy all different colors, which is hard to find in 12 by 28 inch paper, I used spray paint on the white paper to achieve any color I needed. This worked out great. I paint each side of the paper just to seal it and to get all the edges. Making sure the case is level and dust free, I mix the first batch of one to one epoxy. Each epoxy layer is about 1 16th of an inch thick and when it starts to solidify I add the next layer of paper. The epoxy cannot be thicker than 1 quarter of an inch before curing. This is done in several steps. I use a heat gun to remove any air bubbles. When it's dry to the touch I repeat it with the next batch of layers. I don't know if you could see the depth or the detail, but it is quite stunning when finished. This small backgammon board used almost one gallon of epoxy between the two halves. This makes it quite heavy. To make the backgammon checkers, I'm using Corian, a solid surface material. It comes a half an inch thick. After gluing three scraps together to make inch and a half by inch and a half blank, I use a three quarter inch roundover bit in the router table. I keep the end square to prevent it from rolling. Using a straight router bit, I make a tongue on one end so I could mount it into the drill press. Using the slowest speed on the drill press, I sand and then use a scotch pipe pad. I use a 1 8 inch roundover bit on the top and bottom of the checkers. These have a nice feel to them, they're not like the plastic ones. Now to make the matching dice. I cut the Cory into 5 8 inch squares. With the Cricut I cut out templates of each number with the same cardstock. Using a Dremel with a ball mill cutter, I just follow the stencil. It can't get any easier than that. I also use the Dremel to stand the corners of the dice. Some white and black paint and then I polish the dice with the Dremel. You can't get any better than dice that matches the checkers. Now to make some dice cups. I glue up some maple and walnut.
Round the edges with the router table. And cut the bottoms off of each. Then I cut the insides out on the bandsaw and glue them all back together. And there you go. I hope this isn't too over the top. The Mandela was a lot of work, but it really stands out. What do you think? If you made it through this video, please leave a comment or a thumbs up. Please subscribe to see more.